Welcome to the screencast for The Ethics of Care by Virginia Held, and this article is found on page 352 in our textbooks. Virginia Held actually teaches at Hunter College and the Graduate Center uh, for CUNY, which is where I'm studying to get my PhD. And she specializes in this field called the ethics of care. She first tells us that this is a new subfield in ethics. It's only a few decades old, so a lot of definitions that are solidified in other subfields are still being debated right now. Uh, critics say that it's not really a new field. It's instead a branch of virtue ethics. So if you want to be uh, benevolent or beneficent, which all that means is you're beneficent to the uh, beneficial, excuse me, to others around you. But in this work, Held argues that that's not the case. It really is something new. It's not just a virtue to care about people. The the ethics of care is something a highlight on another part of human lives that needs rules to decide what's right and what's wrong in that human domain. Don't worry if that's confusing. Hopefully uh, the explanation a little further on will make it clearer. But of course, as always, ask me questions if something is confusing. <clears throat> so first she says, the central focus of the ethics of care is on the compelling moral salience attending to and of attending to and meeting the needs of the particular others for whom we take responsibility. So all salience means is potency or import. So the first thing you want to notice that's different compared to all the other systems that we've looked at so far is that held is moving away from the universal, the individual, the objective into the particular and the subjective. She thinks it's not immoral to always focus your moral beliefs and decisions on the actual particular circumstances of everyday life. So everybody, all human beings need care for, for at least part of their life. We wouldn't make it in our infancy childhood unless someone was there to care for us. And many of us will need care when we become older and, or ill or disabled in any sort of way. So traditional moralities, all the ones we've looked at so far, are focused on individuals, individual behavior, individual dispositions, individual personalities, individual characters. And of course we know that they operate in a network of other people whether it's a small community or the global society. But the individual is always primary or prior. It's always the foundation of the theory, individual decisions. But the ethics of care says we're not always operating in that way. We're not always individual. We're not always autonomous, meaning that we can uh, operate all by ourselves and provide for our own needs and make our own decisions without help from other people. That we all need care and we all give care for at least parts of our lives. So how does this change moral theorizing if we take it seriously? Well, it says the first thing that changes is that we have value emotion instead of rejecting it. Think about how reasons and justifications are the most important parts of the other systems we've looked at. We don't necessarily look at empathy or sympathy, uh, and the ethics of care would instead place those high up in what is valuable to moral decision-making, moral belief, and moral judgments. But, um, the next thing that changes in the ethics of care is that instead of this individual being the basic decisional unit, relationships are the basic unit that we look at. So the mother-child relationship, any sort of caregiver, caretaker. So it's always relational. It's always the connection between the people, not the individual people themselves. 
Now, of course, valuing emotion doesn't mean that all emotion in all contexts is appropriate. And that's one of the reasons that we need in ethics of care, rules to guide what emotions are appropriate, where and when. The third thing that changes when you switch from a traditional rationalist theory of morality to the ethics of care is something I've already sort of hinted at. Abstract universality is de-emphasized while individual circumstances are elevated to the forefront of moral concern. And health, health acknowledges that this isn't going to be appropriate for every single human situation. When we're talking about the law, um, either arbitrating it or creating it, the old style moral theory is going to be more appropriate. It's universal. It applies to everybody. It's you, you use reasons to justify your moral decisions and your moral judgments. But that kind of moral theorizing might not be as appropriate in the mother-child relationship or a friendship or any sort of caregiver, caretaker. Held says, dominant moral theories tend to interpret moral problems as if they were conflicts between egoistic individual interests on the one hand and universal moral principles on the other. The extremes of selfish individual and humanity are recognized, but what lies in between is often overlooked. And she thinks that what lies in between is the new domain for the ethics of care. I didn't put a page number, but that's on page 354. So persons in caring relations, she says also, are acting for self and other together. It's not all egoistic just for you, and it's not all altruistic, it's both. Okay, and the second section that starts on page 354, she tries to talk about what care is anyway. She tries to define it. What do we mean when we talk about caring for somebody? And to illustrate her points, she brings up the common expression, take care, and notes that we often use it in an emotionless way, like saying goodbye, take care. But even when we say that, we're signaling the connection between us and the person we say it to. And that's the essence of caring, a connection. That's why the relationship is what matters instead of the individual. We can care about something or someone, or we can care for something or someone. The first one signals that we have a disposition in our heads. I care about my health. I care about my child. I care uh, about who's winning the game, whatever. But caring for implies action. We're actually doing things to care for that something or that someone. When we care about something, Held says it's a value. We hold it as a value. It's valuable to us. And when we care for something, it's actually a practice. And that's all that Held's definition of care boils down to. It's a value and a practice. The new thing, the new domain that the ethics of care brings up for philosophical analysis is how caring manifests or does not manifest in relationships. So when we're morally evaluating a mother-child relationship or a caregiver-caretaker relationship, we ask about the level of care within it. If it doesn't have any or it's toxic or abusive in some manner, it's morally bad because of the, re the relationship, not because of the individual behaviors or dispositions. And if it does not display the appropriate kind of care, it may be classified as morally bad. She says, care is not the same as benevolence in my view. Like benevolence is a virtue and she's arguing against the people that say that care is just a subsection of virtue ethics. So she says, care is not the same as benevolence in my view, since it is more the characterization of a social relation than the description of an individual disposition. And social relations are not reducible to individual states. So we would be analyzing the morality of the connection, not individual actions or beliefs. 
But remember, of course, this is still a new field, so it's not completely fleshed out as to what the rules concerning relationships are and how they differ for the rules for individuals. I want you to think about whether or not you think something fundamentally changes when you focus on relationships and networks, communities, instead of individual character or individual actions, when you make a moral judgment, when you think about something the way it ought to be or ought not to be. Remember, that's the crux of morality, when something ought to be a certain way or ought not to be a certain way. So when you focus on relationships, is it something brand new or is it another version of making sure you have a good character, like in virtue ethics?